just like letters, numbers are abstract concepts to children. And since young children are not yet abstract thinkers, really numbers are just a bunch of squiggles or something to memorize and recite for the entertainment and approval of the adults around them. Truly, children begin counting 1 to 10 long before these numbers have any real meaning for them or before they're able to recognize the numerals. Juanita Copley is an expert in early childhood math, and she tells us that the development of number concepts is a long, continuous process, but that it provides the foundation for much of what is taught in mathematics. In this video, we'll explore activities that promote visual recognition of numbers and can begin to prepare children to write them by familiarizing them with the straight and curving lines that compose the numerals. A game called Matching Numbers not only offers an opportunity to learn to recognize numbers, also it reinforces the quantitative concept of pairs and offers some social interaction as well. You'll need two sets of cards with the numbers 0 through 9 on them. Give one card to each child who holds it at chest level facing outward. At your signal, the children begin walking around the room in search of a card that matches the one they're holding. Once children find a match, they continue walking side by side until all of the matches are paired. To extend the activity, once the children are all in pairs, you can organize a number parade by putting the pairs in sequential order and having children march around the room holding their cards in the air. Another option is to use more than two sets of numbers, which means that the children will have to keep looking until they find all of the numbers that match their own. You can also use those number cards for a beanbag toss game that helps promote both number recognition and eye-hand coordination. For this game, you scatter the cards on the floor or ground in no particular order. Depending on the size of the area and the number of cards and beanbags you have available, invite one child or more to stand at a designated spot and toss a beanbag onto a number. When a beanbag lands on a card, call out its number. A couple of things to keep in mind. To begin, the children should stand as close to the cards as necessary to ensure success. And when the children are ready, they themselves can call out the number on which their bean bags land. For third use of those cards, do an activity called straight and curvy. Post the numbers where the children can easily see them. Then show the children that some numbers have straight lines, some have curvy lines, and some have both. Point to a number. Those with the fewest lines, like 0, 1, and 7, are the easiest to reproduce, and invite the children to make it with their bodies or body parts. Repeat this with several different numbers. As an extension, when the children are ready for more challenging numerals, such as 3 and 5, and for the greater challenge of working cooperatively, ask them to create numbers in pairs and trios. A number scavenger hut hunt is yet one more way to use your cards. Scatter them around the room, some in easy to find spots and others in more challenging locations. Then tell the children you're going on a treasure hunt for the numbers and as they find them they should bring them to the center of the room. Later when they're developmentally ready to do so, invite them to arrange the numbers in the center of the room in numeric order. Writing numbers in the sky with a finger, a scarf, or a ribbon stick or with a finger in sand makes practicing numbers a lot more fun than trying to do it with pencil on paper. For one thing, most little hands aren't yet ready to manipulate those long yellow skinny sticks. And for another, being asked to practice writing on paper can seem too much like work, whereas sky writing or writing in the sand is much more like play. Finally, don't forget about good old fashioned hopscotch. This traditional game provides practice with number recognition counting, and sequencing. And one of the things I like about it is that it also offers the children practice with hopping, a one-footed landing, and jumping, landing on two feet. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to this channel, and I hope you'll leave your comments and suggestions for other activities.